everyone. Welcome to Close Up on America's Business, the program that takes you inside some of the most unique and successful companies in America. I'm Janice Marie. On each edition of our show, you have the opportunity to meet some of the most innovative business leaders in the country today. You'll find out what their products, services, technologies, and business models can do for you, and what they're doing to change our world and to change the way we do business. Throughout the world, in almost every category you can think of, there are basically two versions of every product that is produced. There is one that is mass produced, and then those that are custom designed. It holds true in everything from cars to furniture, from suits to shirts. And those in the know will tell you there definitely is a difference. And that may well be the best way to explain the amazing success story of this company, the Hudson Bread Company, headquartered here in North Bergen, New Jersey. This is what is known as an artisan bakery, which means virtually all of its products are custom designed and many created by hand. The result is that this relatively small company is a key supplier to many of the most famous restaurants and hotels in New York, such as the legendary 21 Club, the Tavern on the Green, the Peninsula, Ritz-Carlton, Four Seasons, and Pierre Hotels, just to name a few. Obviously, this company produces a product that is beyond the ordinary. It is indeed superior. The success of this company is not too surprising since it is owned by the son of a Polish baker who grew up in Poland watching and learning from his father in his bakeries. Now he is turning his own company, this bakery, into one of the premier artisan bakeries in all of America. His name is Mariusz Kowarczy. Well, this bakery is different. It's a mixture of a lot of different talents. People who work here, they came from around the world. We have a lot of people from Europe, we have the uh, people from South America, we have the people from South Africa, we have the people from Asia. Everybody who ever works here, they bring something from their own country. It's totally unique than simple spade operation bakery which was established here. And everything, whatever we have as of menu in this bakery is a recommendation of a lot of different countries. That's why when we're going to do the presentation for specific clients, they can choose and they can find anything, whatever they're looking for. All of my doughs are calculated on a time mixing. So the dough is then mixed. And all the ingredients within all of our recipes, flour, water, salt, sugar, eggs, yeast, and minor ingredients as seeds, are all computerized and then going down through the discharge shaft into a mixing bowl. It moves over into a fermentation row. So at this point, we're mixing a rosemary focaccia. This will mix for approximately five minutes. At that point, it'll move out. It'll sit into a resting area. Then the dough will be pushed onto processing. They are producing all kinds of bread machines, starting from mixers, bun lines, bread lines, ovens. This equipment, what is the Artisan SFI, specially designed to divide highly fermented, high quality dough, chia butters, French, Italians, in all kinds of varieties. The softer the dough, the harder it is to divide and to treat it, to, to work it on a machine. We basically try to simulate the work with the hands. At this time, we make heroes, semolina heroes. We sheet it out to a certain width and height, and we're gonna cut it in, in different lines and cut out the heroes. One of the first changes I made as chef was to use Hudson Bread. The reason I chose Hudson Bread was the consistency of the product they use. It's a real artisanal type bread. We use about five different varieties from a raisin bread to a semolina roll. We also use a grain bread that they do. And the quality has always been even keeled the whole way through every day daily. We take usually two deliveries a day. We go through a lot of, a lot of bread here where it's a high volume place. The quality and consistency is, has always been there. This is where we divide the dough get it ready for pre-shaping before we put a final shape to this. This dough has approximately three hours of fermentation. Myself or whomever, one of our guys will come onto the table, we'll cut, divide the dough in the preside shape, put it on the boards and get it ready for a final shape. This is a one pound, four ounce cut that we're working off of. So we do this continually through different parts of the day with different doughs. This is a form of true artisan bread at this point. This is the Galamata olive and rosemary bread. This bread here is a dorm wheat bread with Greek galamata olives and fresh rosemary. One of the most important things with bread is having it. Of course, the quality of the bread is important, but if 
the quality is great, but they can't deliver it to us, it doesn't do us much good. So Hudson always comes through. The bread's always there on time. Our breads are there before the guests arrive for breakfast and through lunch and dinner. At Hudson, there's always someone to call and ask. I have the phone number of my salesperson. If he has to go and pick it up himself and bring it to me, they do so. And he's great. They deliver to us three times a day. The variety of breads that they offer is, is very diverse. We get everything from our loaves of bread to make toast for the guests having breakfast, rolls for dinner, baguettes, all kinds of bread we get from them. And I cannot recall uh, one time when they missed a delivery. Here's what we have, our process of handmade pockets. This is another form of artisan breads that we do here. They're specialty roll that has been designed for the market in New York. They're olive pockets. We also do them in onion. We do them in Black Russian, which is pumpernickel and fresh onions. Here, we'll spend anywhere between four, five hours a day hand rolling all of these products. This is one of Mariusz's products that he developed some 12 years ago. It was a product niche that he started for certain restaurants and steakhouses. And as anything else, it was a product that was developed and expanded because of the want of its specialty. So this is a very specialized product. Everything is handmade. Our lavash, our crisps, our breadsticks, all hand sheeted up by our six women every single day, six days a week. We've been using Hudson Bread at Tavern on the Green for a little over five years now. When we first started doing business with them, we had three different bread companies supplying us with our dinner rolls and our various breads for banquets and certain a la carte dishes. Since then, we've pretty much narrowed it down to just Hudson Bread. We find their product to be outstanding. Their service is impeccable. They're very good working with us on custom design breads. If we have a special need for a certain event or holiday, uh, they're very amenable to helping us out with custom designs. It's been a really good experience working with them over these last several years. Now we reach the final point. This is the stage in the production where the dough reaches inside of an environmentally controlled area in which we allow the dough to mature. This process takes anywhere between 12 to 18 hours. The whole system behind us has three separate individual CPUs that control each of the boxes. So it's a program that we have developed, along with Mevi, to actually get the curve on the product to get the desired result of our bread in the proofing state. When dough meets water, starches convert into glucose, glucose feeds the yeast, the yeast activity produces carbon dioxide and alcohol, which are flavoring and denaturing agents. Enzymes created within the doughs, amylytic and protease, destructure the, the gluten forms, and that's what helps to develop and mature a dough. That's why the time that we put into this is really not the time of the working aspect, but it's the time of its sitting, resting, and developing. One of the more interesting aspects of the story is the fact that this is Mariusz's dad. This, it all started because his dad ran bakeries in Poland for years. This is where Mariusz learned the business. What's it like for your dad to be here now, helping you out occasionally, as he likes to do? That's actually in his blood. This month is going to be a 50 years when he's in the, in the business. He starts when he was 14 and he continued. When I need him, he comes here for a couple of months to help me to redevelop some recipe, to work on the specific product. Otherwise, uh, he's retired, but he cannot stop working. This is the end of the line. This is when we take everything, all the effort and the time and energy into making this bread, and we bring it into the oven. They call on the master control system the time to relieve oven one, deck one. So it's, it's all programmed into the baking cycle. This is the beginning of the process now for it to be cooled, sliced, packed, and then loaded onto the trucks for delivery. So do a favor for me. Define what the term artisan really means. What is artisan bread? When the baker would mix his dough, proof it, shape it all by hand, and load it oven by hand. This is the, the true definition of artisan bread. This is no additional chemicals, no dough enhancers, no dough oxidizers. It was the raw format, almost if you went home into your house and your grandmother was making a loaf of bread. This is the true origin of artisan bread. The real bottom line key is, Ray, when it comes to artisan bread, can you taste the difference? Of course you can taste the difference. Take a loaf of bread that we make, cut it open, look at this bread, smell this bread, feel the crust, the interior, the crumb, the way the bread eats. It's truly an artisan product. One of the keys to your success, I understand, is the fact that your product 
is always so fresh. How do you maintain that? What are your shipment schedules like? How does that work? 21 Club gets delivery for lunch. The product is baked around 9 o'clock. When the chef puts the, those rolls on the table, they're about two hours old. For dinner serving, they're getting product which is baked between 1 and 3 o'clock, and delivery are made around 4 o'clock. So we have product which is, again, about one or two hours old. With this business, I want to create a name which is recognizable everywhere, by every chef in Manhattan and every chef in Tri-State area. It's not about baking bread and supplying restaurants or hotels with the bread. It's about being number one. It's about being the best. With its amazingly broad range of breads and rolls, the Hudson Bread Company prides itself on its commitment to utilizing the latest technologies to improve the quantity and variety of its product, and that, they say, will never change. I'm Doug Llewellyn, reporting from North Bergen, New Jersey. Well, that does it for this edition of Close Up on America's Business. I'm Janice Marie. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. A trip to the bakery means filling your senses with savory smells. It brings back childhood memories of Sunday morning with my grandmother. Once we entered the store, I remember smelling the wide variety of breads to choose from. The choices were overwhelming, but sampling was always fun. <laughs> well, things haven't changed much. As an adult, I still find it all a bit daunting, and I'm so eager to learn, as I'm sure are you. So I've invited two experts to help demystify my choices. Here from Hudson Bread is Ralph Biluch and Ray Million. And Ralph, I hope I didn't say your name incorrectly, was it? It was, it was correctly. Okay, excellent, good. And Ray, it's, it's such a pleasure to have both of you here Thank today. You. We've got Thank lots you. of questions about, about breads and you've got such a gorgeous assortment here Thank today. Thank what you. are some of the most popular breads today? Well, some of the most popular breads are whole grain breads and multi-grain whole uh, wheat breads. Ah, so that would be these here. Would be that selection over there, yes. Excellent. All right. I understand that every nationality has a different way of producing breads, and we've kind of got a sampling from a, across the globe here, don't we? Can yes, you walk we me through them a little bit? Sure. We can start. Yeah, we can start right here. Uh, uh, country bread, which is like a more European, uh, French, French bread. Mm. Uh, semolina right here, Italian bread. Okay. Nice and crispy. Excellent. Uh, French, it, uh, French, French uh, baguette. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which we're also familiar with. That's excellent yes. too. Oh. Uh, Italian ciabatta, long ciabatta, very, very nice bread too. Now, what makes that one a little bit different? Well, this one again, it's, it's a higher hydration. It has a lot of water in it, and it's a very light interior and a heavier crust. Most of your Italian uh, rustic style breads mm -hmm. are um, very thick crusted and heavy with lighter interiors, where your French are a little thinner crusted and lighter in interior. And then once you get into the grain breads, which are more or less of a German style breads, they're a little denser, heavier. So again, each nationality bakes with a different style and a different approach to bread. And Ralph, I know I interrupted you. 
But that's that's so interesting because it helps you understand the different cultures. Are there other are there other examples of breads that we have? Here yes, uh, Cuban uh, baguette, more, uh, Cuban more, baguette. more like American type of bread, mm -hmm. which is very very soft. Which, I'm used to which my America sandwich likes. bread. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, uh, well, excellent. Now, would you say there are appropriate bread breads for different meals or occasions? Well, again, you're matching bread to meals as you match wine to meals and cheese to certain applications. Uh, depending, if you're eating like pasta or, you know, salads and things like that, you know, you would look at a heavier rustic bread because you can like dip the sauces and kind of mm. smear it around and it's mm -hmm. kind of nice. Um, French are usually lighter and the best made with like sandwiches and, and lighter fares and um, different light meat dishes. Uh, semolinas are perfect with pasta. Grain birds are perfect with sandwiches for like smoked meats and smoked fish and things like that. So, you know, it ranges to again the ethnic nationality. The Cuban is an excellent sandwich bread. And you know the Hispanic, you know, people make wonderful sandwiches off of these and panini oh. grills off of that. So again, each nationality, each country, and it's also a personal flavor. How about the holidays? What would you say are the favorites then? Well, holidays range. Holidays, yeah. Uh, uh, fruit bread, not, uh, raisin and nuts. That's that's our popular right now. The most popular bread uh, in the holiday season right now. Oh, that's always been a favorite in yes, our family too. Exactly. Yeah. One of the most popular things. Again, if you were in a German style of breads, you would look at Stalin. That is a uh, sweetened yeast bread with um, raisins and almonds and citron, candied lemon peels. And you said it's, it's called Stalin? Stalin. Stalin. Yes, it's shaped like, um, it actually looks like a half a moon crescent and it's filled with an almond paste in the center. Mm. After it's baked, it's brushed with a little bit of fresh, you know, melted butter, oh rolled in, si in sugar, and you know, it's served during the Christmas time. The Italian people make a panettone, which again is another yeast raised bread with raisins, pine nuts, and it's topped with an almond cream. They're all oh similar my. to some degree in different forms. And that was a panettone? Panettone, yes. Panettone. Yeah. Okay, because I know, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking to go shopping after this, I want to make sure that I get it right. Yeah, you need to get a panettone. <laughs> Speaking of shopping, when I'm looking for a good quality bread, what should I be looking for when I'm in the bakery and I'm, I'm choosing my breads? Well, basically, if you look at all these breads, they're slightly irregular in shape. There's nothing that looks very controlled. So mm. that's the first indication, that bread is not looking like a square loaf that's been punched out of a machine. Um, some other aspects of it is if you look at a loaf of bread like this and you notice the blistering effect, what that tells you is that that bread has sat slowly in a cool environment for long hours, eight, 12, maybe 15 hours sometimes. And why is that good? Well, because what happens is during the process of what they call fermentation, the dough is developing its flavors. So mm -hmm. the yeast is becoming active and consuming the starches and it slowly rises. When this happens, you develop the flavors of the bread. So that's what happens. So you're looking for the bubbles and the irregularities. I want bubbles and irregularity. It's artisan bread. You want it not to look like a, a cookie cutter. You want something that shows you that this had take time mm. to make and there's love in each loaf over And expertise. There. Can we cut a few open? Sure, That definitely. could be fun too. Okay, so we'll look at this one, which is more of a, we, we call it franchise, but it's based off an Italian recipe. Okay. And this loaf of bread here is a very thick crusted, dense loaf of bread. But you would look inside and you would see the pericity or the whole structure. And you <gasps> see these oh, beautiful yeah. open grained, very porous structure. And that's from the yeast gases? That's from rising? the gases, exactly. But it's also a slow, cool rise, which develops the flavor. And um, it's, it's just something that you want to. Oh, yes. It's pleasant. I just want to dig my fingers in and pull all of that way. <laughs> Did you Goodness see that inside, <laughs> dipping up a salad dressing or something oh, like yes. that, or in a pasta sauce? Definitely. Okay. And, it's, and it's nice, firm crust there, too. Yes, very heavy. Then if you look on something like this, which is a sourdough, you'll find the structure just slightly tighter. Okay. Now, is a sourdough bread uniquely American? For some reason, it makes me think of San Francisco. You know, the thing about sourdough is, is, is that it, it, it's been coined as San Francisco. Mm -hmm. But sourdough was the production in Europe thousands of years ago. Was it? Basically. Sure. Sourdough was just a small piece of dough that was left over that they used to put into the next dough every day. And they would save a little piece 
and start to the keep next it growing. Up. And that's what they did with it. So that was selling. And you can tell the difference that you were showing us with the porosity a of the breads, exactly. really showing that. So let's talk a little bit about healthy options. What would you okay. say would be our healthiest options for breads right now? Mm -hmm. I know people are interested in locale and low carb and low everything. Well, the, the healthiest bread right now, probably what, that we look at seven grain, or health bread, some people call it, which is... They, uh, did you say they call it health bread? Health bread, yes. Health bread. Uh, if you look at this, it's a very tight, structured bread. Mm -hmm. You feel the moisture in it. But what this has is the addition of the grains, which, you know, we have seven, I mean, five natural grains. Then there's addition of flaxseed, oatmeal, uh, there's millet, flax, sunflower. Again, these whole grains and that's have a nutritional what we're hearing value. So much about right now. Exactly, oatmeal helps to reduce the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Flax seeds actually help to regulate uh, blood sugar levels. Flax seeds also has omega three in it, which is another heart healthy type of um, nutrient. Mm -hmm. So, if you're looking at health grain breads, you're looking for something that's tight, heavy, full of seeds, very moist. And also it's made with whole wheat, so there is a reduction in the carbohydrate intake and it's more complex ah, for us. And I'm sure it's delicious too if you get it fresh. Excellent. Speaking of fresh, how do I keep my bread fresh? What would you say is the best way to store it or, or just to make sure that it's fresh? <laughs> okay, well again, applications, this is a large loaf of bread and for the, you know, most families it's a lot to consume. So the safest thing to do is take it home after it's bought from the bakery, cut it in half, put it in a, pe a plastic bag, Ziploc, store it in your freezer until the next time that you need it. Once you need it, you just pop it out, let it thaw on the table, and then put it in the oven 10 to 15 minutes, about 350 degrees. You take it out, it's just like it came out of the bakery oven. Nice. Now, how long would you say that good bakery bread should last? What do you think, Ralph? Artisan bread like ours uh, do up to top three days. Really? Not, Two to three days? When you've got yet. it good, you want to eat it when it's fresh and exactly. it's good. Eat it fresh and buy every day. <laughs> and buy it every day. <laughs> my baguette on my way home from work <laughs> each day. So can you give us some tips for those who are at home and bake their own bread? Sure. Again, if you're at home and you're the artisan home baker, you probably have a little sour culture that you keep inside that you use to start your dose. One of the best things to do is allow at least the first hour to hour and a half after the dough has been mixed to have a rise, which is the first fermentation. After that fermentation and you divide the dough and shape it into the form that you're looking for, best thing to do would be to cover it nicely with a saran wrap and place it in your refrigerator. Okay, in the fridge. In the All fridge. Right. And again, eight to 12 hours, so you would base your time schedule on how you're going to make this bread and when you want to bake it. This way, during that time, while it's sitting in the refrigerator, it's developing very slow gases and it's developing its flavors and everything. And then also it helps to make the crust a little bit better because the sugars kind of reach out. That's the, the cool rising you were talking about, Cool correct? rising, exactly. Then again, the next thing would be just make sure that your oven is heated to 500 degrees with the water pan inside of there to create some moisture in the chamber. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, you score your bread, put it into the oven, turn the temperature down, and you'll see you'll get a nice crust. Finish it and eat it. That's it, exactly. <laughs> we only have a few seconds left, but I'm wondering, do you have any uh, information about the history of bread that you wanted to share with us? Well, bread's pretty funny when you think about it. It was a mistake how it was actually started. Um, records indicate about 6,000 years ago in Egypt that um, the food that they eat was a, um, a gruel, which was like a porridge, a cooked grains and was left out overnight and of course natural yeast spores and everything developed inside of this gruel and they started to watch it bubble. They actually threw it on fire and it puffed up. So oh, that's how they really? started. That was the first original like bread. It was just a baked off of hot rock. So breads itself was not really something they figured out I'm going to make bread. It just happened. And 6,000 years later. So that's are. another accidental discovery. Exactly. Thank goodness we made it. Ralph and Ray, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hudson Bread today. Here's how you can stay connected to today's show. Each day, log on to our website at dailyconnections.ebrew.tv. It offers more information about our guests and provides the recipes for dishes that you see prepared each day on the show. While there, you can also download full episodes of our program. Again, that's dailyconnections.ebrew.tv.